Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot, and in this episode of our series on building the small HO scale layout called The Grunge, we're going to talk about industries and structures. In the last episode, we laid track, and I went back and forth on whether to do wiring or structures next. But I decided I needed to know where the structure footprints were going to be so I could finalize the location of the spur tracks, and in turn, figure out where to put the wire drops in. Or maybe that's just the subconscious excuse I made up to avoid soldering. I'm not sure. You decide. My channel covers all aspects of model railroading, so if you like what you see, please subscribe to stay connected. Click on the bell and you'll also get notified when there's new content available. We've got a lot of mileage to cover today, so let's get moving. Like many modelers, I've acquired way more structure kits over the years than I can ever use in my lifetime, and certainly more than will fit on my main layout. So for the grunge, I wanted to use kits that were already in my collection as much as possible. As you'll see, I think I've accomplished this, with one possible exception that we'll talk about later. At 15 inches, the grunge is not a deep layout, so to fill things out, I'll be kit bashing almost everything along the back and left side of the layout to fit the space. Almost nothing will be built the way it's described in the kit's instructions. As you can see here, I've mocked up some structures already, using foam core to visualize and test fit. Foam core is a great tool. For these mock-ups, I used foam core I picked up at the dollar store and braced it with inexpensive wood strips, so it's a ridiculously cheap way to go. There's no point paying full price for foam core just to cut it up and then later throw it away. So I find this to be a quick, economical way to better visualize your space. This next point isn't exactly about structures, but from this plan you can see I'm already starting to consider where roads and parking areas will go. This does have implications on the structures and their locations, as we'll discuss in a little while, so I wanted to take that into account as early in the process as possible. The grunge would have no reason to exist without industries to serve. While I was thinking about industries, I didn't just take into account what kits I wanted to use. I was also considering what industries those kits were supposed to represent. Did it make sense for the location? Was it something that was going to receive the appropriate number of loads in and out? Would it feel at home in an urban setting? I also knew that I wanted to have a lot of boxcars on the grunge, so that had an effect on the types of industries I considered too. This structure will be the American Can Company. I'll be using Walther's Hardwood Furniture Company to kit bash it. This is a kit I've had for a long time, as evidenced by the blue box, but I haven't been able to find a use for it on the main layout. This is the case for many of the kits I'm using on the grunge. I kit bashed a version similar to this plan, but essentially reversed, years ago when I belonged to a club. I liked its look then, and I thought it would be a good fit here. I really wanted to repeat the white structure with red window scheme I used on that layout, but then I remembered that the backdrop photo industry I'm using here is all white, and I didn't want it to just blend in. I was originally going to make it a furniture plant, as it's named on the box, but the track only holds two cars, and I didn't think it could realistically support the volume of a furniture plant, so I decided to go with a can company. This may still not be realistic, but by the 70s and 80s, many can companies were moving to trucks for shipping materials, so I think it's plausible. This structure will be Darlington Electronic Instruments, and will use most of a Walther's George Roberts Printing Company kit. Again, you can see from the box I've had this a while. This industry was designed to look like it was once rail served, but no longer is. This large shape here represents the old delivery door for a rail car. I used this kit in this location because I liked how it bumped out and filled this space between the turnouts, making it feel more like the building was purpose built for the site, rather than just a structure plopped down in a space because it happened to fit. I'm also seriously considering putting in a delivery door on this wall, for a couple of reasons. There's an operational opportunity first. You can park a truck here along the tracks, and when the crew comes in to do their work, they need to track down the driver so they can finish the job, which adds time and interest to the operations, both of which are important on a small layout. It also provides some quote-unquote history for the structure, showing how the building has changed over time to suit the various tenants' needs. Bonus points if you know where the name comes from. If you know, mention it in the comments so I can give you kudos. The News Herald uses the Atlas Middlesex Manufacturing Company as its base, but will be built as a long, shallow flat instead of the more compact, rectangular structure it was designed to be. Originally, I was thinking I would only use one long wall and the larger side wall, but it fits so much better using the two long walls with a bump out. 
Also, as you can see from the plan and the 3D rendering, I was considering tacking on a more modern prefab addition, shown here in blue. Again, this would provide a sense of history. If I did that, it might lend itself to freeing up that second wall, which could be used elsewhere. More on that in a minute. However, I do really like the idea of using both long walls here. The News Herald is the name of a local newspaper in Lake County in Ohio, where I lived for a while as a young child. I liked the name and thought it was general enough that it could be at home in any major city. This works well since the grunge doesn't have a set location, and this layout is set back in the days when papers were the primary source of news, so it would be a bustling place. I have a couple of newsprint boxcars that I like, and again, couldn't really find a use for them on the main layout, so this will work out great. You can't really tell by these small bits here, but this will be the location of the Whirlpool Appliance Factory. It will use Walther's modulars, which were available a number of years ago, but are now discontinued and hard to find. Luckily, I stocked up at the time, so there can be benefits to buying things you have no immediate plans for. Yeah, yeah, that's how I'll justify it. Sure, I like it. Anyway, I wanted a large structure, and these will provide lots of options. I'm still not sure of the final layout. Even what's shown here on the plan is not likely to be how it takes final shape. I was going to have an open loading dock, but decided that wasn't very prototypical, so I may need to have a long sideways dock that's covered. But I don't want to block too much of the layout or expose the structure to any more damage than it needs to, so I'll be giving that some more thought. I'll keep you posted. I chose an appliance plant because I like the opportunity for a large building, and I already had the 40-foot high cube appliance box cars. I bought these Atherin cars before Tangent released their more prototypical and more detailed cars a little while back. I don't think the prototype ever had plugged doors, for example. But the Tangent cars are also much more delicate, and since the cars on this layout will get handled quite a bit, I thought using the Atherin cars would work out well. As far as picking which manufacturer it was, well... To be honest, once I decided that this was going to be an appliance factory, I picked Whirlpool because in the 70s and 80s it was the era-appropriate logo I liked the best. So once again, making decisions just because it feels right. This will be the location of the team track. I may use a Pike Stuff modular loading dock kit here, but in all honesty, I'm not sure exactly where it will go. The placement of the dock, like the diner we'll talk about in a minute, will probably be one of the last things to be finalized for location, and the dock will likely be the last thing to be installed. Finally, there's this plot, which lies between American Can and Darlington Electronic Instruments, and I'm still not sure what this will be. I thought maybe some sort of food processor, but no matter what, it won't be rail served. Originally, I was going to use one of the long walls from the Middlesex manufacturing kit here, but as the News Herald began to take more shape, I moved away from that. So what you see here is actually one of the end walls from that kit. But it's just a placeholder and almost certainly won't get used here. One thing I do know is that I don't want to use another Walther's kit here. I've used enough already and don't want it to seem too uniform, so I want to mix it up a little bit. I do have some options based on what I already have quote-unquote in stock. I could use DPM modular pieces. I also have plenty of lifelike Belvedere Hotel and Mount Vernon manufacturing kits. I've got a couple of Proto 2000 Moore and Company warehouse kits, and while this is technically a Walther's product, it was originally a lifelike kit before they were acquired by Walther's, so it doesn't count. And also I have a number of Weekly Herald kits, which is probably my favorite kit ever. When it comes down to it, the kit or kits I use will depend on what type of industry it's supposed to represent. I do have a germ of an idea of what the industry could be, but I really want to put it out to you. If you have an idea for an industry type and an industry name, please put it in the comments below. If there's one I particularly like, I may use it. One note though, I generally don't like pun industry names, so take that into account. Remember, this industry isn't rail served, so it can be anything that would fit the urban theme in the 1970s and 1980s. Although there's plenty of industry on this layout, I wanted to include some non-industrial structures as well. You know, like a supporting cast, although I doubt any of these are going to win any Academy Awards. But these will help break things up a little bit and hopefully make the layout feel more like a real place. This structure, to be called Laeda's Joint, is made from a DPM Carol's Corner Cafe, say that five times quick, and it'll be the local watering hole. I may do a detailed interior, but that'll depend on whether or not I add a backdrop to the side panel. 
Either way, I'll add more details like signage for the front of the building and a fire escape, meters, and window bars for the back of the building. This stylish box is the stand-in for what will likely be a tenement building. As I mentioned in a previous video, the box is here to see if we hit it when walking by. If we hit the box, we'll hit the building once it's there. Full disclosure, I have hit it once, but my wife, who's quite a bit shorter than I am, has not, so I think we'll be good. And if it becomes a problem, it can be removed when not operating. I'll probably use the Walther's Parkview Terrace Kit, but as I mentioned, I'm a bit worried about using too many Walther's kits. It's hard because Walther's makes so many nice kits for large industries, and a lot of the other manufacturers just don't. Scarily enough, if I do use this kit, it will be the only one on the entire layout that I didn't already have on hand. The Wormtown Diner is made from yet another Walther's kit. This one, Miss Betty's Diner. But this one's been built for a long time and was on a small diorama for years. I wanted to use the structure somewhere and retire the diorama base, so I'm hoping it'll work here on the grunge. Like I mentioned before, the location's not final, and it'll depend on the placement of roadways and pace. So that's where my head is concerning structures. As always, anything and everything here is subject to change, but as of this moment, this seems like a good plan. I will need to make some decisions on the final form of the News Herald building, as well as the undetermined industry, and I'll keep you updated as things come into focus more. And I guess I really do need to do some wiring now. But that's all for this episode. If you have any questions, tips, or suggestions, include them in the comments below. I hope this video will help you in your own thought processes about structures for your own layout. And finally, if you enjoyed this video and think others would as well, click on the thumbs up to like it and leave a comment. This lets me know I'm on the right track and will help put this channel in front of a wider audience. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.